Okay, hello everybody. Welcome to the latest in the Phase 3 Meets series. This week I'm joined by uh, Giles. Giles, how are you doing? I'm very well. How are you doing? And I'm... thank you so much for inviting me on. No, no, no. I... No, not at all. Not at all. The privilege is mine, Giles. The privilege is mine. Um, for those of you who don't know, uh, Giles is a veteran of the uh, HR. That makes you sound old, doesn't it? Year Sorry, recovering recruiter. <laughs> it, it, it's not intentional. Yeah, veteran of the HR uh, kind of re resourcing space uh, over 20 years of experience and is currently the director of strategic development over at uh, Job Train Solutions. So how are you? The first question, I've got to get the most important question out of the way first. How the hell are you coping with this heat wave? Barely. Uh. <laughs> but if you're watching and you're thinking, I said heat wave, it's raining outside. This is recorded uh, probably a couple of weeks before it's going to go out. It's absolutely scorching at the moment. Um, so, yeah, how you been? Uh, how you been coping? It's cracking the flags out there, as they say. And um, you, you may see here actually in our office, which is um, a fairly recent um, evolve in terms of our working space and where we are and I'm really pleased that we are very slowly coming back to the office albeit we're using the office as a hub but it means I get access to great broadband and down here on our ground floor where we've got the boardroom it's actually it's not too bad so I'm coping okay thank you that's good to know better than I am clearly you can <laughs> see a very shiny forehead t-zone pretty sure I've got there. one too <laughs> 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 OK, wh why don't you tell everybody uh, or give everybody an overview of Job Train, the software you provide? Uh, always a good starting point. Yeah, OK. So Job Train is um, it's a beautiful mix of um, a tech business and a people business. So um, our, our mission as a business is to deliver pioneering technology that keeps people at the heart of recruitment. So um, we're obviously a software provider, um, but we see the people element of what we do as being as important as the tech bit as well. Okay. And in fact, in terms of the DNA and the makeup of, of our business, although we've got some really wonderful, wonderfully gifted tech people, um, a lot of the people who work within our business um, either have HR or recruitment backgrounds before they joined us. So they've got right. some understanding, they've got some empathy with the clients that we work with and things. Um, so yeah, we, we, we basically deliver a, a recruitment software platform, a talent acquisition platform that will handle everything from your know, vacancy authorization, um, job advert distribution, online application forms, assessment, interviews, right the way through to including onboarding, um, which is a you know really critical element of hiring as well. So we'll do pretty much everything. And coupled with that is 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 the people element. So the support aspect, whether it be um, having uh, proper support through the implementation process, you've got lots of experience of implementing systems. So you know <laughs> Just how a bit, important yeah. that is. <laughs> or the ongoing support and success of customers is critical uh, and that's generally provided by people within job train that have got lots of experience in recruitment okay so it can be that that area or that industry can be a little bit confusing i suppose if you're if, if you're not from it so why can, can you just give a, a a brief explanation of kind of what recruiting talent acquisition ats what these software uh, softwares actually do yeah, so if you if, if you look at recruitment, it doesn't matter who you're hiring for, um, you have to follow um, quite a defined process. Mm -hmm. And within that, there's quite a lot of different steps that you need to go through to hire anybody at all. And invariably, um, there's quite a lot of admin associated with recruitment, yeah. whether that's getting a, a vacancy approved for sign off or whether it's reviewing applications or communicating with uh, the people that applied for your jobs or onboarding them lots of admin. So recruitment platforms and applicant tracking systems are ultimately designed to underpin that process, automate as, as much of it in a positive way um, as possible, to give back time to recruiters to focus on uh, the more human elements of uh, recruitment. Um, I think in this age of technology, um, sometimes there's this criticism of it to say that it takes away the human experience, but actually when used correctly, <coughs> Recruitment technology should free up recruiters' time to be more human and have more human contact and, and basically focus on higher value tasks um, whilst also giving the candidates, the people that apply for our roles, the best possible personalised, most positive experience. OK, OK, thank you very much for that. Um, there's been quite a lot of progress in, 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 in that space. 
uh, over the last kind of four or five, five years plus. Where do you think the industry's heading? Um, what, what's your kind of insight in, in, in around that? It's, it's a very, very good question. Um, so the, the ATS or recruitment software market at the moment, if we just look purely at the UK, um, there's a lot going on. Um, firstly, there's a lot of providers. There's probably about 50 providers operating wow. in the UK right now. Some US vendors, some European. But if, if you go out to market for an ATS, you've got a lot of choice. And that choice is quite confusing. And you've got, essentially, if you look at it, uh, depending on the size of your organization, you've got some of the, uh, you know, the, the, the big tier enterprise providers. Um, then you've got your sort of middle tier for, for you know, medium size organizations. And then um, if you like for smaller businesses, you've got loads and loads of choice. So within that, you have um, some old guard vendors that have been operating for really quite a long time. And then yeah. you've got some new disruptive vendors that are coming in with some really beautiful, um, really well-designed, slick technology as well. So um, it, it, in essence, um, I think it's a really positive thing for the end user, for the customer. Mm -hmm. um, the new disruptors that are coming into the market, um, ultimately, I'll uh, use the phrase that a rising tide lifts all boats, if you like. So yeah. it's keeping yeah. each and every vendor um, honest in terms of um, how we're innovating, how we approach our product, our roadmaps, how it's delivered, what kind of support you know we we deliver to our customers as well. So um, there's a lot going on. There's quite a lot of disruption, but ultimately, I think it's it's a very positive um, place to be um, for a customer right now. Okay, it's and, a bit can confusing you... sometimes. Yeah, I think I think the the the, the typically is sometimes between kind of ATS recruitment and and the, the, maybe the terminology involved, I suppose in some of the time. So you, you talked about kind of um, some new vendors coming in there, disrupting um, and, 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 and the like. Can you provide it or can you give an example of how they're doing that and, and, and what the disruption actually entails? What yeah. are they mixing up? Yeah, I mean, a lot of it, it right now is coming down to um, things like automation. Um, mm -hmm. So we've got now got access to some 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 really clever technology, um, and I'm not going to go into AI and that kind of thing because it's like it's a phrase that's overused. Uh -huh. But there is there is tech out there that can um, ultimately automate a lot more of the process in in a positive way. And when I say a positive way, I mean that um, we're when we're automating recruitment. Obviously, we should be focusing on people, so the people that are applying for our roles people that are engaging with technology. Um, but what that disruption means is that ultimately we should be able to speed up the hiring process, give everybody a, a much more positive experience of that process, whatever it might be. Um, I think that now um, in terms of tech there from a, an advertising job advert distribution um, perspective, um, there are um, some really big players in terms of job boards, um, but there are now new ways that people are using to advertise, which is probably far more closely aligned to conventional online marketing, such as you know things like uh, paid search and that kind of thing, or paid performance ads. So this is something that is, is, is game changing as well that falls a little bit outside of sort of what we, we what we do as core but we integrate with with some really good tech platforms that uh, you know are, are delivering some great solutions for customers and and Giles, do, you, do you think that obviously the covid crisis has kind of fast forwarded the industry in terms of recruitment kind of by default and the technology involved by default over the past kind of three to five months because you know i know for, so using phase three as an example we we brought in our first kind of totally virtual hire and 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 there are more to come and i wouldn't have thought we'd ever do that i wouldn't have thought that we'd bring someone into the business without physically sitting in front of them at some yeah. point for, for whatever amount of time and i know over during this kind of phase three meet series a lot of other um uh, some ceos and, and and kind of leaders in in business have said exactly the same thing that actually they they the technology is so advanced now that it allows them to do that and have you seen that kind of shift because clearly people are still being bringing people what you know what are your what are your customers saying well <clears throat> um i think if, if i look at it from from our own perspective um at job train um it's absolutely fast forwarded a lot of things within our business and we've got to take some positives from this uh from the, from this chaotic world in which we yeah, are right now yeah. and that has been that a lot of us have um almost been forced to engage with and use technology in ways that we haven't before yeah. and actually what we've found as an outcome is that actually you can still be highly productive um even if you're not in the office environment yeah. But there's a challenge around that. And especially with, we bring it back to recruitment, 
that specific challenge is around making sure that anybody that is involved in that hiring process um, has um, visibility to everything that's happening within that recruitment process, mm -hmm. um, that there's consistency in that recruitment process, very important yeah. indeed. You've got a compliance element to think about as well when you're hiring people too. Um, you've got GDPR to consider as well. So actually yeah. in the world yeah. of ATS, it's probably brought the, the need for um, a, you know, a, a modern recruitment platform uh, right up the agenda for a lot of businesses that perhaps don't have one. Um, and those that do have one perhaps that's a little bit older are actually starting to see some of its areas of weakness a little bit because they've started mm -hmm. to push it perhaps a little bit beyond where it's capable of going. Right. So, um, yeah, I mean, you know, for, for, for us as a business here, we've discovered actually that, you know, we, as, as soon as lockdown happened, we were prepared, we went out and bought tons of laptops for everybody, rebuilt yeah. infrastructure, engaged and started using Teams effectively. And what we found is we, we believe that we're probably still operating at about 95% productivity as a business, even though most of us are now working remotely. Yeah. But there is then an inherent need for everybody to have um, more visibility, more shared access, whether it's to documents or information, data, all those types of things. And, and reporting is another part of recruitment software, which is very, very critical because as, as, as we are in COVID, every single business is now incredibly cost conscious. They're either trying to strip out cost yeah. or review yeah. spend, that kind of thing. So reporting and analytics within uh, a recruitment software platform can then give you insight into um, where are there delays in the process? We're potentially losing or, or, or you know, people dropping out of the process. Is our advertising effective? Effective? You know, wh where are we spending our money on? Because sometimes there, there's been um, previously sort of almost an approach to sort of post and pray when it comes to you know posting job adverts to different job boards. But now we've all got a very yeah. keen eye on what's performing. So that's where it can help too. Okay. Um, you talked there about kind of cost businesses looking at cost saving mm. and, and so on. Absolutely right there. Um, you seem there to be sat in, in what looks like a very nice office, I have to say. Thank um, you. Do, doing great things, as it, as it, as it <laughs> says behind you. Um, what's the kind of makeup of, of the team at the moment in terms of those who, can anyone come back into the office at the moment? What, what's the kind of situation you've got yeah. there and, and what's the kind of utilisation of the office at the moment? Yeah, it's, it's an interesting one. So probably... Uh, we're now um, sort of coming up to mid-August, uh, probably about a month ago now. Um, we, well, the first thing we did, we 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 did a we did a full sort of risk assessment in the office as well to see could we bring people back. Cool. Um, the next thing we did was we actually spoke to um, the team here. Um, we spoke to everybody individually and um, yeah. gave them the opportunity to have conversations with us to air any concerns that they might have and what have you. And the conclusion that we came to as a result of that process was that. Um, we felt it would be really positive for people to be able to come back and see one another again, yeah. um, but they had to feel safe. So our, our yes, it's really fortunate. We have we do have a beautiful office here at our HQ in Altingham, um, but it's split onto three floors. So we completely right. reconfigure the middle floor. So we now have one huge desk on our commercial floor, and it allows the teams to come together one day yeah. each week to meet um, at a safe distance, but actually to see one another again, which is really yeah. nice. And there's a few people that are um, working from the office, maybe one or two days a week. You know, people struggle with broadband and some people actually naturally just want to yeah. be back in the office environment. So what will we do um, right now? Um, the Job Train HQ has become um, a hub um, for yeah. you know occasional meetings for some people to come in and work occasionally. Um, but that's being managed quite carefully because of the well-being of, of the you know, people in Job Train is paramount for us. Of course. You know, if, if they're happy, um, then yeah. they're going to be productive, but also they're going to be giving our clients the best service possible. So, you know, some people are happier coming into the office environment than others, and we absolutely respect that. I mean, it's going to be really interesting to see what the future of offices generally is now, isn't it? Because I think I, I echo exactly what you just said, Charles. I think even our office will, you know, it's now open and um, there's a few people coming in and out and we've, we've kind of just saying just let us know who's coming in and when so we can just kind yeah. of you know ensure that there's not too many people in on any particular day um but there seems to be that mix of those who are dying to get back just to maybe a, a change of routine or or get out of their houses or flats or apartments for for, for a few hours and those that are just like no i'm not gonna do that yet uh, and that's absolutely fine that's absolutely fine but i think it's it's interesting to see what will happen to these, you know, there's 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 all corporations out there who've got spent so much money on these big fancy kind of projects in in, in offices, 
and yeah i think a meeting hub almost like a social hub is is where we're going where we're heading i i think so um and i know um people in my network and friends and family some of whom are almost being mandated to come back and work in the office space and these are not small places these are places that employ you know 1500 2000 people and it's yeah. it's, an, it's an uncomfortable environment they don't feel safe coming in and that's got to affect people's um, well-being, their mental health, and ultimately, yeah. and their productivity as well. And I'm happy to report that most of the people that I've spoken to are taking a, a similar approach in terms of uh, yeah. hubs, listening um, to their teams and their employees about any concerns they've got, and uh, and not pressing the issue that everybody should be coming back to the office on the basis that we we're able to perform effectively. That our mental health from being locked down and being isolated at home isn't being impacted too much, then it's something we should be able to manage um, very positively. And it's 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 amazed me the things that we've, we've been able to achieve virtually. You know, we used to run our scoping sessions with uh, new clients. It was always an on-site, half-day meeting, that kind of thing. And we're still onboarding new clients right now. And uh, but we're doing all of that virtually. And actually, okay. we've been able to run, um, you know, scoping set up testing and even training with clients and do all of that virtually and it's worked well so um yeah it's amazing what you can achieve when you're actually thrown into a situation isn't it that, yeah. that, that's what's happened you know yeah. nobody would have even considered this kind of doing all this stuff virtually in the first place uh, yeah. but when you're thrown into the kind of lion's den you adapt and businesses and people are proven to be extremely adaptable and flexible I couldn't agree more. Necessity in this case has truly been the mother of invention. Um, I think from my perspective in terms of the experience of COVID, um, we're still in the midst of it. I think a lot of people are very getting to the point now, they're very weary, but we've been invited into one another's homes as well for the first time. So um, yeah. you know, we're, we're <laughs> proud of the office space here. I love it. Um, but speaking to people in my network and colleagues and clients and that kind of thing, we've been invited into people's homes and actually we've found that we've we've created new connections, more meaningful connections by getting to know one another on a personal level that would never have happened previously when yeah. we were being all corporate and being in the office every day. So there's, yeah, it's 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 a, it's a dark situation, but there are positives we can draw from it for Absolutely. sure. And and talking of some of the positives there, you 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 mentioned kind of employee well-being, obviously mental health. Yes. Um, and and the like. Um, it's a question I've asked everybody um, mm. who who I've spoken to in this in in this series uh, because it's so important. Uh, it's it's crucial in the current climate. But but how have you kept the team, your team, the job te- job trained team, if I can get my words out, um, engaged, motivated, and above all, kind of manage the mental health issues uh, and well being issues during the crisis? Yeah. When you you know, you, you can't see people in the same way, then, then then that's something you've got to be acutely aware of. And I think it, it's all well and good to say, right, we've got we've got teams, you know, we can see one another on video. Um, some people are, um, will naturally engage more in that setting than others. Um, and, and some other people are more happy to chat on the phone. I yeah. think one of the critical things that we've made really clear, and hopefully we've led by example here, I think I think I hope I have as well, is that um, we've made it clear to everybody that it's okay not to be okay. Um, yeah, I don't know about absolutely. you, but I'm going to speak quite openly here that yeah. um, during COVID, that um, you know there are days in the week when I don't have a good day. I'm not feeling so great. I can't necessarily explain why. I can't put my finger on it, but mm. I just feel a little bit down. And I think. Um, people within our business have felt confident to be able to say, do you know, actually, I'm not going to stick a face on today because I'm not feeling that great. Let's just have a chat about it. And a problem shared is absolutely a problem halved. So we do regular check-ins with everybody, um, you know, not just in a formal setting. Yes, we do our town halls and we've done the quizzes and all the virtual yeah. beer sessions, yeah. all that kind of thing as well. Um, but you know, I always I like to feel that we're, we're inclusive as a business, and and it's more about we staying connected with people and and really listening. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah. No, I think that's absolutely crucial. I think, um, like you say, the 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 amount of time that, and and I'm really happy that you you said that that it's okay to not be okay. Yeah, it's a really good term, and you know, we have good days, we have bad days. The team will have good days. The team will have bad days. Um, but it's working through those, understanding those. And I think it's important to imagine, uh, to, to to realize as well, that actually people have bad days when they were going into the office as well. Yeah. So it's not just a case of the bad days are when we're all on lockdown. Yeah. You know, you tell me a person who had 
you know, five great days in the office for three months in a row and I'll, I'll show you a liar. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it doesn't work like that, does it? I think, you know, we've, um, you know, there's been, there's been obviously lots of positive stories um, during this COVID period of um, people and humans being more um, considerate of one another and more supportive of one another and probably being their selves a little bit more, which have, partly comes maybe out of being in a in a home setting. You know, you are yourself a little bit more. And I think that if there is a positive um we've felt confident to talk about um, perhaps not feeling so great or not having such a good time. And that's something like you said, and just reference, we probably never would have done in the office environment that we're all in at the start of this year. <clears throat> so it, it's another positive we can draw from it. And I, and I hope that that doesn't change. I think having open and honest conversations about people's um, well-being or particular pressures that they're facing, you know, we all during the course of COVID have been affected in, in many different ways. And, and hopefully if we can just remain considerate of one another um, in that, then then that's got to be a positive step and a positive change for the future. Absolutely. Let's hope so. Let's hope so. Now, I know you've been incredibly busy um, over the last few months, obviously, with the uh, with your kind of how series of, of yeah. webinars. And there's some some incredible kind of value adding content available there. So is, is that something you guys were were working on? pre-covid and pre-lockdown as well or, yeah. or had it just kind of intensified perhaps a little bit um, in the <clears throat> recent months yeah there's, there's probably a bit of a story there so um at the start of this year um we plan to um go to lots of great events um run by people like um the firm the forum for in-house recruitment managers in-house recruitment so you know exhibitions and that in fact yeah when we kicked off this conversation, it was at the CIPD show back in it November. Was. It feels yeah. like an age yeah. ago. Now. Absolutely. Um, <clears throat> but I'm, 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 a, I'm a talker. You probably got that from this conversation. <laughs> uh, I, I tend to get wheeled out to do talks and I really enjoy it. I enjoy sharing knowledge and insight and getting feedback and learning from people doing doing uh, the talks that I do. Um, so it was a, suddenly a frustrated speaker with uh, a certain amount of content prepared and no one, nobody's listened, nobody's listened to it. Um, I had at the end of the end of the last year thought, you know, perhaps we could think about doing a webinar series. And we were already doing um, these how sessions. We call them how sessions because we used to run for our clients help on Wednesday sessions. The idea was that clients could um, basically dial in and then show be seen um, a demo or a bit of training on a specific bit of job training. So it might be how to create assessment forms, advanced report building within our BI platform, whatever it might be, and people got value from it. So when we went into COVID, I thought, well, we went on a real pivot. Um, it, it went into support mode really with our customers as much as possible. People weren't buying lots of recruitment tech. So it's like, right, well, what can we do to support our customers? We had some like NHS Scotland, um, our largest client um, and other care clients who were recruiting at Pace, Hermes, well advertised, another client of ours. And then we had others that were sadly going to be losing people, you know, within the hospitality or leisure space and that kind of thing. So um, we, we tried to connect the two and then think, well, what else can we do to support? Um, we thought, well, now's not time for, for selling, you know, recruitment technology, but we've got quite a lot of knowledge and insight. Perhaps we can share that. People are stuck at home and they're quite bored. Perhaps if we can share something that's of some value to them, then, you know, we can feel like we're helping in some ways. And sadly, there's an awful lot of recruiters that have been put on furlough and an awful lot of that are now losing their jobs. I think that right now there's still 25 percent of, of professional recruiters, you know, corporate recruiters that are still on furlough. So um, we started the sessions really just to share knowledge and insight and hopefully get you know a, a conversation going. And um, it was a back of the fag packet type job in terms of writing out initial 12 sessions. And uh, we did those and got some amazing feedback. Um, I've been really fortunate to be joined by some really fabulous guests who've got loads more knowledge than I'd ever hoped to have. Um, I'm going to include you guys in that because I know you're joining one of <laughs> our Job Train How Talent sessions we a bit are, later yes. in September to talk about the 12 steps. Um, of buying and procuring HR and payroll systems, which is something that I know a lot of our customers struggle with. So, um, yeah, it's been it's been fabulous to be able to, to connect with new people, um, to have conversations, um, hopefully answer questions and share some knowledge. Yeah, I mean, Loved it. I, I, I was on it. Uh, I was on your site, um, I think, a couple of days ago. And and, and just the amount that I, that I looked at. And honestly, they're all really value adding actually as well Thank so i'd, I'd, I'd recommend anyone who's who's watching this you know have a look 
have a look. You know, I'm sure there's something there for you to to, to learn and to pick up on. Uh, it's Please really, do. really interesting. It's just like Netflix. You can, I'm, 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 you, know, you can share the link out if you like, but all of our previous sessions are on our website and uh, you can access any one of those. In fact, we, we always produce a little blog post afterwards as well. So you can almost have a look at it. It's like a, a canned list of everything that was talked about and some of the key pointers and things. But it's been, I've learned so much personally through getting guests on yeah. and uh, discovering more about their particular areas of specialism and stuff so i hope that the the guests that have joined us so far and the following that we've now created is um you know they're getting the same kind of value from it brilliant brilliant and and as we come towards the end of the the, the first part of this session um what's the direction of travel giles for 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 drop train and what kind of exciting innovations can can we look forward to Big question. So, um, <laughs> put you on the spot. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it, it is a big question. I think um, when we went into um, lockdown, um, I think as a business, we 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 had to we had to make a choice, um, and we had to make a choice of whether we were going to build or whether we were going to slide. Um, there's a lot of um, tech vendors out there, a lot of businesses that you know had to um, put a lot of people on furlough and things. But then, obviously, your business is sort of held in aspic a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, we decided to take a more bullish approach um, and and not take that route, and we decided to build. Um, so, um, our, our fabulous business plan that the the the, the uh, ink was barely dry on the paper. And suddenly, we had to go and reassess that, <laughs> which we did. But from in terms of where we are now, it's been a really good opportunity for um, a, a lot of reflection um, and, and a lot of building internally. So we, we've done that, whether it's um, reviewing internal systems and processes to make our success um, you know, service to our customers even better, um, implementing and investing in new software ourselves to support that kind of that effort as well. Um, but also looking at our product very closely. So we've been very busy um, with innovation. Uh, we're soon to be launching a new um, hiring manager um, web app, which we hope is going to make, okay. again, remote people's use of a management of recruitment on the go using, you know, one of these an awful yeah. lot easier. So we're very excited about that. Um, we have just started a process to completely redesign our whole candidate experience. This is the front side of things that you see. So when people candidates search for roles, they apply for roles, they register for alerts, all that kind of thing. We think and hope that um, we can make that a lot better. I think that sometimes um, within the ATS world, that candidate experience is lagging a little bit behind the best of B, if you like the B2C websites you might see, like compare the market and things. So hopefully I'm excited to be delivering something that is going to be um, a real value to our customers, but also their, their candidates as well. Um, and I guess more than that, we know that there's going to be really, really high volumes of people that are out of work and applying for roles. Yeah. And again, showing some human consideration and, and giving them a process that isn't frustrating, that is intuitive and easy to use is, is a responsibility. Yeah. We go back to the mission of, you know, keeping people at the heart of recruitment. Yeah. Um, that, that is our responsibility. So, you know, these are sort of two areas of innovation and we have uh, an awful lot more coming up our sleeves as well. So it's, it's, it's exciting times. So. You know, we've been busy. certainly sounds like it certainly sounds like it looking forward to uh, to seeing where where you are kind of this time next year and how things have progressed absolutely so um i do obviously really appreciate your time and, and i know you're chocker but we're just going to move on quickly to the the the, the quick fire round i keep calling it quick quiet fire it never is uh but there you go so it's just i ask you a couple of questions um well a few questions and just you can you can answer yes or no or you can answer just you know one word or you can go into detail totally up to you all right totally all right cool but this is just to kind of get to know get to know the man behind giles a little bit more <laughs> uh we'll, we'll find out if that's a good thing in the, in the next five minutes um okay so what's your what's your favorite app right i'm gonna say so we, we just had a little bit of a chat about um mental well-being and and what have you and um i have set myself a few tasks in lockdown I, I i like i like like a plan and i like a goal as well um and i always promised myself that i would take some time out and to start practicing meditation a little bit more just switching off from all the noise and let's face it, it's been a lot of noise over the last few months yeah. so um i i i signed up to the car map and I've been treating, well, teaching myself a little bit about meditation. I'm still not good at it. Still struggle to turn this off a little bit, but I'm getting there. So I highly recommend it. Actually, it's really good. There's loads of guided meditations, all kinds of different areas. So, yeah, loving that app. And I'm trying to do 20 minutes to half an hour of uh, meditation a day. 
Okay. And, and, and do you find that during that period you can really switch off and just focus? It's very, very hard. Think, but I, I, can, I understand yeah. that this is all part of the process. It's, it's training your brain to yeah. switch itself off and give it a little bit of a break and a little bit of a reset. I think we live in a world of, and this, this sounds strange from coming from a you know guy that's just really proud to be part of the leadership team of a tech company, but we are surrounded by visual media, noise, stimulation, everywhere we go. Yeah. And I think it's critical that we we, we give um, our brains a little bit of a rest every once yeah. in a while. So that's something I've been uh, seeking to do myself. So so just just moving on from that, when you when you go on holiday, yeah. Um, do you remember that? <laughs> are you still? Yeah, yeah, long time ago. Uh, do you still check your emails? Do you still kind of, or, or do you switch off totally? Because yeah. I find there's two types of people really. Those who write, I'm on holiday, I'm not even taking my phone with me, or certainly not work phone anyway. And there's those who'll have the work phone, you know, email diverted to the personal phone just to, just in case something happened and they need to check in. Well, as, as a business has been on a journey, we, we're, we're fortunate that we've we've grown. Yeah. Um, and we've grown and the people that, that are within the business are um, absolutely superb. Um, and that, as we've grown, has given me the confidence that when I do go away on a holiday that suddenly I, I can switch off now. When we were smaller, I just could not let go. Um, we are now being um, very strict with everybody. <laughs> if you are on holiday, that is your time. You should You're not away. be accessing emails, responding to phone calls, and we won't be contacting you in the nicest way possible. Yep. Um, so, we, you know, we're lucky. We've got great depth within the team. And, uh, you know, there's nothing that can't be handled while anybody's away on holiday from our um, chief exec and founder, Chris and, and Alison, to Derek, our MD, Claire, our commercial director, right the way through the team. So, yeah, yeah we, sh we should all be, and I hope everybody does, switch off. And if, switch if there off. is an email or a Teams notification that comes back from somebody on holiday, they get a very short, sharp, get off <laughs> get off you're on holiday yeah okay right next question um what's your favorite film whoa that's that's a really difficult one a really difficult one and i'm not even sure that i know the answer to it um I'm trying to think of any i recently i can only think about a recent films i've okay, watched i watched fun. the i watched the um the film on netflix the scorsese film uh the irishman and i absolutely Brilliant. adored that um but i also watched a fantastic film um called the art of driving in the rain um which is a beautiful film it's a bit of a tearjerker right. um and it's all about um the story of um a, a, essentially a racing driver in his career but it's told through okay. the eyes of his dog so his dog okay. narrates the whole story and it's a Random. real yeah. yeah, it does tug at the heartstrings. It's a beautiful film. I'd really recommend that one. Okay. And um, continuation of the film kind of question, what's your, or who is your favourite film character? Oh, these questions are getting hard now. <laughs> is that going to be, is that going to be in, in a positive sense or? Uh, no, no, just anyone, you know. You know, I think I'm going to say Hannibal Lecter. I don't know what that says about <laughs> me, but um, Anthony Hopkins <laughs> in that film was just chilling um so he's yeah. yeah i think that character stands out massively um wow. okay. just about to start watching the um the um hannibal series um, i think it's on on netflix so i've been told that that's quite good so i'm gonna give it a go okay i, I better make the next few questions easy now that you've uh done <laughs> favorite characters jeez okay maybe a good job this isn't being done live um face to face okay what's your favorite board game do you even play board games? Maybe you don't play no, board games. You know, no, I, 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 I would love to say I'm I'm not a patient person. It's one of my one of my my weaknesses here, okay. um, and the idea of doing a jigsaw or anything like that just drives me bonkers. I, I like to be out and active. Um, yeah, yeah for, for me, board game is it's all, it's all in the title. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I love I, know, I love I, I do like playing cards. Um, don't yeah. ask me what my favourite game uh, and game is because I, I can't repeat it on here. Um, but yeah, I do love playing cards. I just had a few days away with uh, with my with my younger daughter and uh, we played loads of cards together and um, whilst getting rained on in anglesey <laughs> there you go okay you like cards is an ace higher than a king or lower than a two uh yeah the ace is higher higher isn't it yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah my kids are, my kids and wife are convinced it's ace two three and onwards and i'm like no 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 it's jack <laughs> being king ace 
Uh, what are you absolutely. doing? <laughs> yeah, has to be, has to be. Okay, last question. Yeah. Um, uh, very apt considering what we said at the very start of this. Uh, would you rather be too hot or too cold? That's a good one. I'm going to say too hot. Do you know what? We we spend all year complaining in this yes. country about how bad the weather is. And then when it gets hot, we'll start moaning about it. I, I, I might be boiling right now. Um, and my forehead might be pretty shiny with the fact it's so muggy in here. But I'm not <laughs> going to complain about it. Too hot, definitely. <laughs> Brilliant. Brilliant. Honestly, I've really enjoyed this, Charles. You, you've been, um, yeah, you've been fantastic. Honestly, I know how super busy you are. So I really appreciate you taking the time out. I said it's um, been a real privilege. Thank you so much. No really worries. appreciate it. Uh, to those of you watching, guys, please do follow Phase 3 on the uh, on various kind of social media channels and do join us for the upcoming Festival of Knowledge. Ten virtual events spread over five days running in early September. All the details are available. Do check out the Job Train website. Like we said, there's loads to do there on the, on, on the How series and get to know the company a little bit more. Giles, thank you so much again. And everybody, see you next time. So thank you. Cheers.